I'm not a math geek, scroll on. If I hand you two curves in three-dimensional space, there's a mathematical way to see if they're the same or not. Isn't that neat? Okay, they're gone now. The first step is to change how you parameterize the curves. Remember that a curve is just a rule that takes a number in and spits out a place in 3D space in a way that nearby numbers spit out nearby places. And you can always stretch and squeeze your input numbers so that the point moves through 3D space at one unit per second, where we treat the input number as time. This is called an arc length parameterization, and it's super useful. They're definitely gone. So once you have your arc length parameterization, you can now ask questions about your curves. Imagine traveling along one of your curves carrying an arrow that always points in the direction that you're traveling. This is the velocity vector. Unless the curve is perfectly straight, the arrow will have to turn as you do, and you can calculate the rate at which it curves. This gives the acceleration vector. Now that acceleration vector is longer if you turn more sharply, and shorter if you turn more slowly, but the length of that vector is a number associated with each input time. In geometry, we call that number the curvature of the curve, which is super useful. Alright, they definitely still wouldn't be here by now. We're alone. So we're almost done. If you take the velocity vector and the acceleration vector, they form a 2D plane, and that plane has a third vector that's perpendicular to it. To determine which way, we use the cross product of the velocity vector and the acceleration vector. This third vector is called the binormal, remember that. Alright, anyone that's still here must love math and geometry, right? Now, take the direction of the acceleration vector and ask how it changes as you move along your curve. That will give you a third vector, which can be broken up into two pieces. The first piece points along the axis formed by the velocity vector, and the second piece points along the axis formed by the binormal. Now, the amount that this third vector points along the binormal axis is another number associated to each point on your curve, and hence is associated to each input time. That number is called the torsion. Whew, we can finally get to the cool stuff now that they're all gone. So now you have two functions for each curve that tell you stuff about said curves. The curvature tells you about how fast it bends, and the torsion tells you how much it twists as it does so. These are both functions of the same thing, the input time. And a classical theorem in differential geometry is that if the curvature of the two curves match and the torsions of the two curves match, then the two curves are the same curve. The only possible difference between the two are that they could be in different places and or rotated versions of each other. This is the fundamental theorem of curves, and it was first proven by Reinhold Hopp in 1862. Curiously, he also wrote one of the first textbooks on differential geometry. And now, for all of you cool people who stayed, the geometric secret of the universe is that string theory intertwines with the